Welcome to the Existential Empath Podcast. My name is Tanya and I am an intuitive empath. My intention is to share valuable tips, tools, and techniques that I have learned so you can tap into your own inner healer naturally and intuitively. Today, I have a special guest. I have Martin Tice. Martin is a spiritual teacher who focuses on the art of shamanic journeys and the application of the medicine wheel, a holistic approach to finding well-being, balance, and inner peace in life. His coaching practice, Light Trails, assists others on their journey from suffering to joy. Martin helps others through presence in combination with his shamanic education. Welcome, Martin. It's such a pleasure to have you on the show today. Thank you for being here and for inviting me. So you and I, we're going to dive into the world of shamanic journeying and how we connect with our spirit within. And so, Martin, you live life with purpose. And I do as well. I think this has been a journey in my own life that I have began to recognize that I was not living my life with purpose for a really long time. And so you live with a very strong set of values. And it's basically a result of all the journeys and experiences that you've had throughout your life. And so let's dive a little bit into what is a shamanic journey and how did you learn about the healing aspects? Can be so many different things, right? And I, it's over over uh, time in in many many podcast interviews. It feels to me it's important to say that most of the shamanic journeys that people might have heard about are plant based or some kind of psychotropic, where we where we have experiences with the aid of medicine, some kind of medicine, plant plant medicine. And there is a shamanic journey without that. And so I am on the latter um, path pretty much by using my drum. It could be done with a rattle or you even experienced journeyers could just do that without any kind of aid, right? Because they know their way. But um, I'm using the drum and what happens is people are laying down and we're doing an exercise to relax and then to really step consciously from uh, something that is called in core shamanism non-ordinary reality or the reality that we're actually talking about right now that physical more physical reality into a non-ordinary reality where um, the limits of time and space and gravity and all these things that we have in this physical experience are are freed right Mm -hmm. similar to a dream state and the only difference to a dream in a uh, and compared to a shamanic journey is that we're more conscious we are we are depending on the depth of the journey that we're in um more or less connected to our body and we still feel it somewhere oftentimes sometimes we're completely somewhere else in that non-ordinary reality and we we don't really feel that body but the connection is there we can always return. It's kind of like an, an immediate exit option that we would have. If something would arise that we really feel uncomfortable with, we could always, and we know we can always go back, right? That is a big difference to once I'm on an ayahuasca trip or experience, I'm in for the whole ride and I, I will have to endure in this experience until it is over, right? And so the, the shamanic journeys that I facilitate are more in the realm of um i'm able to be a little bit more in charge which is which is what appeals a lot of the people who are afraid and we spoke about this really shortly before we uh we joined this call here if we have suppressed things if we have certain things that we are we know kind of intuitively that we're holding a lid on then knowing that we're in charge and that we can decide it's not like once once I open it up, it's just like I'm helpless and I'm just, I don't know, I need to take whatever is coming, right? So that that as the framework and then the shamanic journey is getting in touch with our subconscious on, on one level. It is the, the inner images that come up, the inner sensations, the feelings. And it is also being in, in this conscious collective or collective consciousness 
also it is not only our own things but also we are tapping into nature into the collective consciousness and therefore receiving guidance from all kinds of things like it could be from the natural realm trees animals water elements everything like that and or we have spirit guides we have our totem animals which is an animal again but a little bit different and so there are all these guides who are able to show us or give us perspective but also answers to questions intentions that we have so it's really quite an an adventure of discovery you know to be really curious and to discover this inner realm in this other kind of reality yeah and it's so powerful and i'm i'm glad that you brought up there's different types of shamanic journeys because i have had several guests on my show to talk about psychedelics and ayahuasca and personally i have not dabbled in those areas when it comes to shamanic journeying i am like you i use the music the sound of the drum and even in my quantum healing hypnosis sessions people have said to me i felt like i was on a shamanic journey but i'm not even using the drum so martin let's talk about the drum i will say the first time i went to a sound healing bath here in uh, washington state and one of the practitioners had come over my body with the drum. And I'm telling you the amount of emotions that were coming out of me, I was seeing flashbacks of myself using the drum and hearing the drum and all of this emotion came bubbling to the surface that after the, the sound bath, I asked him, could you use the drum on me a little bit more? I was feeling this very deep connection with the drum. And I know that you probably have more information about why shamans use the drum and what does that represent in the shamanic journey? Yeah, that's a really good question because uh, my teacher, when I got introduced to this, uh, said that the drum is the canoe that we use to pass over into non-ordinary reality and mm. that the drum beat is the paddle. And so we have, we, we have <laughs> this sound vibration that is able and that is that is the magical part of, about the the drum or the rattle it holds our body in this reality it's kind of like that physical element that is is kind of like stay, giving us the the connection to our body but then on the sound waves or on that other ether, more ethereal element of the drum beat and of the drum our souls or the, that part of us that journeys somewhere else is elevated or just kind of like floating with that canoe to these other places, right? So that is what I think is one part of this. And then the other part is I feel the drum is such a, such a old way for like, when, I feel like the drum and the fire are probably things that go all the way back in human history in human experience right and so um i used to play the west african drum when i was younger and uh when when you when all the people are sitting around the fire drumming the drum and people are dancing in front of the fire oftentimes children would be on the backs of their mothers or fathers or maybe they would be still in the in the in the belly and so we as human beings have been with this very tribal sound for since we can remember in a sense and even further than that right so i feel like this 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 old 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 way connecting us with this really essence of our existence in a sense and that that is also a part why we relate so much to the drum because it's just it's it's the heartbeat pretty much right it is when we are as um unborn beings in the womb we hear that we hear that heartbeat and that is probably what also is that connection to life right hearing that drum so that is my association with the drum and with that power and why it it can transform and transmute so many things in us. Yeah, it's so powerful. And you know, I've even been on hikes before where my clear audience is very powerful. I can hear through 
realms very easily. And I'll hear that drum out in the middle of the woods. And I'm like, why am I hearing a drum, you know? And so it's so powerful. And I know too, I've got some friends who have actually created their own drums. And I know that that's even more powerful because you're consciously connecting with each of the materials with the drum. I think he had an elk hide drum. And I noticed that different hides on the drum actually had different tones and different sounds. Do you know anything about that? I don't, but it makes total sense to me that the, the medicine, if we, if we talk about animal skins, the medicine of the animal that is used, it has a different frequency, has a different vibration, right? And so it is that, that power that, I mean, in the best sense, we as builders for these drums would would kind of like hear what is the what is a drum what does it want to be if that makes any sense right and then to 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 ask an animal to receive the skin so that we can use it right and to be really conscious about everything that we use in the building process if it's wood or leather how you bind it uh in the back together all these ingredients you're really like that would be my my best sense of building a drum and really asking for permission permission receiving these gifts and building that instrument that is helping other people to really connect with that energy right and yeah. maybe to just change the perspective a little bit i have a bot drum which is just out of the box, really ordinary, right? So there is nothing special in terms of what we just talked about. Yet still, because of the energy that I bring and the, 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 the journeys that I facilitate with that and the places that drum has, <laughs> that drum is so full of mana would be the Hawaiian uh -huh. energy word. It is so filled with all these very high energy places that this drum, even if even if it is out of a box or had been, it's now filled with energy, right? So it's, it doesn't have to be that we can inform an object and, and really bring that energy to everything that we work with just for people who might think, yeah, well, I'd love to have my own drum, but you know, I only have access to this one. And so it doesn't, it doesn't matter. It matters, but it really doesn't matter if that makes any sense. Yeah. Cause it's all energy frequency and vibration and the intention that you put behind yeah. it. And, uh, I, you know, I, I didn't even know you could even, I mean, I didn't even think you could make a drum, but when he said I made my own drum and I'm like, let me hear that. And it was an elk hide. And I'm telling you every little cell in my body was jumping. And I'm like, there is something with me and the elk hide. I don't know what that connection was. And then you know, when I had asked the gentleman who had done the sound bath years prior to that, he had said he had had an elk hide too. And I'm like, there must be a connection with me. And I like that you mentioned that there's a frequency behind it and how each animal brings that in. And so that kind of guides me into, you had mentioned totem animals. Martin, what are totem animals? I know for me, I, uh, I really connect with animal spirit very, very much. And so when things are happening in my life, I'm really consciously aware of what animal spirits are in my external reality. And so can you talk a little bit more about what is a totem animal or a totem spirit? So um, the, the, the totem or spirit animal in, in, in essence is our potential showing up in animal form. So when we do a shamanic journey and we specifically call our totem animal for the first time, maybe this is my, my, one of my first journeys and I'm really interested in finding my totem animal, then that is our potential showing up in animal form. And it is oftentimes, I mean, we're here in a, in a podcast where people can probably relate to that, similar to an uh, um, astrological chart or something, where we, we can read certain things out of it and it shows us a lot, but it doesn't mean we are, our, our destiny is kind of like already written, right? So similar to the totem animal, my totem animal is uh, is a leopard. So one aspect of it is it to really learn from that animal, what is its habitat? How does it eat? What does it hunt? How does it hunt? How does it mate? What is it its social 
environment is it a, a lo more lonesome animal like the leopard is or is it maybe a herd animal or a, a, a pack or tribe animal like wolves and coyotes so all these things give us an idea of how we live more in in our highest potential you know and to really see how does that resonate with me and um, to not have it fixed in stone but to always kind of see how can this animal teach me something that is the one part and the other part is that in our journeys it is like our higher self sidekick in form of an animal that is goes through these journeys with us and has oftentimes very wise things to say or just supports us in being courageous in entering a situation that i might be afraid of or not knowing what is what is going to come so it is also that part of that higher self that is because it is our full potential, right? It is that being of like that all the filters, all the all the peeled away stuff that we have accumulated over time. I see myself if I would be if I would be living that energy every day, twenty four seven, three hundred sixty five. I would probably be in an enlightened state, right? But it, I'm not, and so I receive this guidance from this from this animal, how, where I'm stuck, where I can let go of certain things, what I can introduce in my life that would benefit myself of being more present, me being here in the now. Yeah, that's really neat. And so I was feeling a cat on you. I was literally in my head, I was visualizing a cat. I, mine is a tiger. And, you know, there was a time in my life, I had this interaction with squirrels all the time. They were, I'd be out sitting in the, you know, in a chair and one would jump on my shoulder or it would, you know, I just had all these interactions. And so that's when I started to learn about how animals play a role in messaging to us and uh, not even just in a shamanic journey, just in everyday life, you know, yeah. when you're seeing a lot of different um, uh, in the animal kingdom coming about in your reality. And so I started to look it up and it was a time in my life where I was beginning to, um, I was, re you know, harvesting, I was kind of harvesting things. I was, you know, creating things in my life. And, you know, so it was just funny that the squirrel kept coming in, but Martin, I want to talk about the medicine wheel as well, because, um, I know that there's different types of those. I I've seen the labyrinth. I've seen the, you know, the medicine wheels and different types, but can you talk a little bit more about what that is and how you incorporate those in your shamanic journeys? So, um, similar to the shaman, the shamanism in itself, we have to be aware that there is not one approach because it kind of like existed in all the places all over the world, right? So people used nature and the perspectives of nature and the, the teachings of nature. And similar to that, there is not one medicine wheel. And uh, the easiest way to explain that is that when we look at the medicine wheel that I learned most of is from or originated from the Lakota mm -hmm. and they have the animals that are the, the guardians or the, the, the kind of like those, those um, keepers of that direction or just um, representants, you know, these, these animals, they are distinct in, 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 in the different directions, just like a compass. And just for the argument, say, let's, there is the eagle in the east, we have the mouse, or sometimes the coyote in the south, and we have the bear in the west, and the bison in the north. And if we go to the to the Southern American medicine wheel that I also learned at some point, there are different animals, the attributes are in different ways, but the way how we work with the medicine wheel is very, very similar, how it gives us perspective and guidance, and how these these uh, different directions create that sacred space that we work with as sh shamans or as people with that teaching. And so the way I use it is most of all, when I created my program, I used the medicine wheel as a blueprint. And I thought about like all the journeys that I did, what do I want to help other people with when they go through this program? And with that intention, I really specifically put each journey in, 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 in the progression of those 16 weeks according to that medicine wheel. And so we go through that and I know it is, that is, I, I was thinking about if I should ask you to omit that question because, <laughs> because I feel, 
I feel in, in these conversations, the medicine wheel is quite simple, but it's very, very sophisticated. And in order to give it the, the right amount of uh, um, context, we would probably have to talk very much, or I would have to talk about that a long time, because this is still after more than 10 years of learning and training with it, I still feel I'm just scratching the surface, right? Yeah, it's we're it evolving is, with our knowledge. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so it's basically a, 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 the wheel of life or a, a way how we go through circles, we go through a spiral in a sense, we in the in the teachings from the Lakota, we start in the east, that is where we begin. And so we go through the medicine wheel in a clockwise motion. And then when we end up in the north, we start over in the east again, you know, so it is that that spirally motion and there are so many different aspects we could use the uh, seasons, for examples, are in those different directions, the element are in those directions and by having an understanding of what these attributes and these forces these medicines are, I can understand when somebody talks in their journey about certain things and we can use that direction to get a certain perspective let's say i want to understand more about the my emotional well-being or maybe certain things that 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 i want to integrate then i know as a teacher we have to go into the south of the medicine wheel because that's where emotion is as oh. the quality right so that's this is how we work with it and basically, it's really a very sophisticated system that um, helps us to orient us just almost like a compass. So that comparison between North, East, South and West is really, um, yeah, it's kind of like fitting because it helps us to find orientation, right? Yeah. Yeah. And the medicine wheel dates back. It dates yeah. really far back. Right. And so, you know, I, I live in North Idaho in uh, Eastern Washington. And so there is, I don't know about you, but I'm a big Sasquatch believer and I've had my own experiences and we had an experience where we had actually cleared this woman's land. She was having a lot of activity on her land that she couldn't explain and so i went out with a lot of different sound modalities drums and sound bowls and you know different things we cleared the land and the next day i'm not even kidding you martin a medicine wheel appeared in her backyard and so we were like where did this go you know where did this come from but it was a method of communication is what we were picking up on it was uh, the beings of the land, the energy that was going on in this particular area where she lived. And after that, it started to really calm. And one of my friends who was there, she's Lakota. And she said, this is powerful. Just even the fact that a medicine wheel appeared, you know, in the backyard, there's some sort of a, he, we healed the land, you know, there was a healing that took place. And so it was really emotional. It was very powerful to know that we were communicating and like shamanism you're communicating through different dimensions you're communicating in different frequencies and in different realms so to speak vibrations and so that's what was happening when we were clearing the land and so it was powerful and the way they had made it they had made it with different elements of the land and it was so obvious it wasn't like oh this just magically you know that oh someone made this or whatever it just was so perfect the way that it was created. And I know, you know, you said you were a little hesitant to t talk about the medicine wheel. And I, I think just us as a civilization, we we go deeper and deeper through our journey, right? And so what you and I may understand today, in a week from now, we may understand it differently. And I always say that um, my belief systems are changing all the time. And especially when I'm doing this podcast, because I'm meeting guests like you that are just expanding my consciousness more and more. And I'm like, wow, I've already changed, you know, what I believe. And so I just visualize that medicine wheel as a spiral and it just keep, you just keep going deeper and deeper into your understanding of life. <laughs> yeah. And thank you for elaborating on that because the element of the physical medicine wheel, I didn't even talk about, right? I just talked about that, that metaphysical, but uh -huh. absolutely when we do some kind like always for me if i go to a certain place or if i like if i align myself that is also what we do with the medicine wheel if we lay it in the in nature 
we have these corner stones or we put these big stones in the four directions and then if you're really if you're really intent on creating uh, a medicine wheel you also fill the whole circle and then maybe you have lines to the center of the circle but it's it's a very very sacred powerful place and if for everyone who does a vision quest at some point in their life they will spend their last night oftentimes in that medicine wheel and receive their vision right so it's a very very powerful um, instrument so thank you for mentioning that yeah because i i think i see the visual of the medicine wheel and i i love that you brought up the metaphysical because i didn't even know that i just learned from you i didn't I was looking at it more from a, a physical standpoint versus a metaphysical. So just even, you know, you sharing that with me is kind of activating me like, wow, there's, there's even another layer to that. There's another yeah, spiral. And there's always to that. another layer. <laughs> <laughs> and there's probably someone out there who's like, Hey, I have another layer to that. Yeah, that's, that's, <laughs> As they listen what, to the show. <laughs> you just described what I, what my key takeaway of the medicine wheel is. Wow. There's another layer. So there's, <laughs> it's really these layers stacked on top of each other and they're probably infinite. Right. So thank you. Yeah. <laughs> it's funny. And so Martin, every time I would communicate with you, you would say aloha. So I knew exactly where, <laughs> where you were. And so you have this, you know, you say that your heart comes alive in near the Pacific ocean in Hawaii, and you have this burning desire to, or a vision to create a sanctuary in Hawaii. Can you talk a little bit more about that? Absolutely. I mean, I can talk the rest of my life about this probably. So <laughs> I'm, I'm usually, I'm usually finding the balance between. So the idea and the vision is that it's basically um, a place for people to come and heal, right? So um, because when we look at the way the state the world is in right now, it was at some point I understood the vision came really early on many, many years ago, but I realized that the more and more trouble happened and with all the things that we're struggling in with right now is that we on this earth probably need a lot of access or many people need access affordable access to these places of these refuges or sanctuaries and so the idea is to create a, a network of pretty much open source uh, sanctuaries where it is we we all are intent we have that vision to create these healing places in the world and not only to heal the humans but also to heal the earth with that and to do it in a way where we share the knowledge where it's not a franchise model where i'm building a sanctuary for um with with very distinct expensive retreats but really to have it show up in a way where people can afford it right and to have it in a network where if somebody else feels like well hawaii is nice but my place of calling would be portugal or it would be in Sedona. thailand whatever mm -hmm. whatever it's somewhere in the world and to say well i i i have i have this calling to build this like somewhere in the world and it is probably similar to the vipassana movement right where people can go and join and do the meditation and do the course and then they can donate afterwards and if they don't have any money money that's also fine so my my uh, because hawaii is just that place where i i just love to be and you mentioned the ocean it is i've never i've always been near the ocean as a kid in the vacation and i love the ocean but i think since i keep going back to hawaii i really realized how powerful this ocean and the element of water and the healing aspects and the teacher aspects of water and the ocean are, you know, that is basically where we all come from and to really be in, in that element more and more. And um, yeah, so it is, it is really something that calls me and it feels like a, a big project to be honest. And I try to be really careful with these words, with these kind of like, it's, difficult it's big it's going yeah because it limits forever. you right <laughs> yeah but it feels like uh i i know the property and i've knew i i i've known it since i drove by and it's in uh, kona on the big island or hawaii island and i drove by for the first time and something r rattled me i i didn't <laughs> realize it at the time but this property is still there in in this way it's sold it's probably been sold more than once but it's it's still there 
And so I feel like it's just waiting, you know, it's just ready. And so that is what, what's calling me in, uh, in that sanctuary. That's a beautiful vision. And, you know, just stating to yourself, I attract the right people at the right time. You will not have to do all of that on your own. You Absolutely. will have all of perfect divine alignment. Everybody's just going to show up easily and effortlessly, and it's all going to take place. And, you know, from an energetic standpoint, Hawaii is the heart chakra of the earth. And I, I recognize this recently. I've had several friends who have gone to Hawaii and they've come back and they're like, Tanya, I'm suffering with grief. I have so much grief going on. I'm like, it's Hawaii. You are healing all aspects of your heart. And I do feel based off of where you need healing, you will be guided. The earth will guide yeah. you. She will say, Hey, I need you out here. Like I lived in Florida for 20 years and I knew deep down in my soul, I needed to move to the Pacific Northwest. I didn't really know why I just, and I didn't even know where I just knew I was being really strongly guided. And so that's what landed me here in um, uh, Eastern Washington, Northern Idaho. And I know it was because I needed to heal that connection with nature. I was, I was healing that connection with water in Florida, but then moving out here to be more in the trees and the mountains. And there was a different connection there. And I feel uh, my spirituality shifted from Florida to the Pacific Northwest. And I think when you travel to Hawaii, you'll have a completely different experience. And so there are times in our lives where we are being guided and uh, the people that are meant to be there with you in that sanctuary will also be guided there as well. And then you'll look back and say, wow, that wasn't difficult. That was so easy. And everybody came together with the perfect vision and the perfect intention. And um, I think a lot of us across the planet, Martin, are going through this right now, us as grid workers, so to speak. I know I, during um, the pandemic, I was just going to every single national park by myself, driving around, and I was healing. I was healing myself. I was healing the land. And uh, when you do things like sanctuaries and put those together, like you said, you're not just healing the, the humans, we're healing the animals, we're healing the plants, we're healing Gaia, we're healing everything. And I think it's just, it's beautiful what you're doing. And thank you for coming on the show. I think this has been such a beautiful uh, energy that you're bringing through, you know, for the show. And um, I love nature. I love nature. And I love for me, nat naturally being kind of pulled towards shamanism was very, you know, kind of normal for me. Cause I'm like, you know, I've probably done this many lives before. And that drum was just waking me up and saying, Hey, you remember me? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it was similar when I saw the, I went to a retreat here and I saw one of the crystal skulls. There's only 13 crystal skulls. And one of the, the, the handlers of it, I had seen it and it had immediately communicated with me. And I had this emotion come over me and it felt similar to the drum. I was like, there's something with, you know, all of these little pieces of the puzzle are coming together. And I know mine probably has to do with Lemuria and it dates all the way back, you know? And so that could be why many of us are being guided to the coast, you know, as well. We're feeling that pull towards um, you know, where we used to be. <laughs> Absolutely. And just to maybe to affirm that and, and, and add something to that. I feel like I, I, I'm home when I'm in Hawaii really. And it makes no sense. Everybody just who has never been there, doesn't understand it at all. And those who know it kind of understand it a little bit, but this is just so hard to explain and put in words. It's just the feeling, right? It's just like, Oh my God, I'm home, you know? Yeah. So, um, and the energy that you mentioned is really challenging, like really. And it's not like I'm getting used to that every time when I get there, it's really like that, that, and each Island has its different qualities, right? So the big Island or Hawaii Island is that volcanic root chakra place that is really bringing up all that. Ugh, I don't yeah. want to deal with Density. this, right? So, <laughs> so um, it is really interesting to see what happens with me and what happens with the resistances and that it's in one way very gentle, how these resistances get dissolved, but in the other way, it's really no BS. There's no way 
you have to like i have to deal with this because i have no it. other way it's just like rising 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 and if i try to resist <laughs> it just gets worse and worse just like as you had to throw up probably at some yeah. point you just surrender and say well okay i don't want to do it but i have to you know so that i've is... heard that either hawaii sucks you in and you stay or they sp it spits you out it's yeah. one or the other and it's based off of your frequency really i i do feel that and I, there's been times in my life I've been guided to Hawaii, but I'm not sure I'm ready. I'm not sure I'm ready to experience that yet. I think I'm, I'm working on some things to, to, to move through that. And I know when Hawaii is calling me, there'll be no stopping me. It'll be really calling me and very similar to how the Pacific Northwest was really, I couldn't shake it. I just, it was nonstop in my dreams. It was on movies. It was showing mm -hmm. up in my external reality. I'm like, okay, mm -hmm. universe, I hear you. I'm supposed yeah. to make this move. And so it'll be a matter of time, but, uh, I know, I know when Hawaii calls me, I'll be, I'll be coming, <laughs> but I'll be prepared. Yeah. <laughs> well, Martin, this has been wonderful. How can people, uh, learn more about you? How can they connect with you? Um, and what types of services do you provide? So, uh, light trails, co light trails.co is my website that is the best way to connect with me and uh, i'm doing currently and i will be doing a webinar series it's starting in june so uh this is probably more likely to be heard around that time where we do the elements so we, no, we're doing the we're visiting elements in the four directions of the medicine wheel each element per week and that is something that is free everybody can join who's interested in that and other than that, just sending me a message or connecting um, in another way through maybe LinkedIn or social media. I'm not too keen on social media. So that's why I said lighttrails.co is, is the best way to do it. And other services, I have my one-on-one -on -one, uh, life program that I just mentioned where we go through 16 weeks. It's a group program or an, a one-on-one, -on -one, whatever people prefer. And that's, is that remote? That's online? That's online. Yeah. Right. So I've, I've, uh, really, it, it was, it was a discovery process and a really like a trial and error, but, um, I was really, um, surprised that it, that it, that, that, that this way opened up. Right. So I thought I have to do this local, but then at some point I realized we can really do this. And so, uh, I'm working mostly online also due to the fact that I'm moving I'm, I'm intent on moving between Hawaii, Norway, and Germany. So it was Ooh. important for me to do that, you know? And so other than that, the, the free workshop, my, my coaching services that I offer, um, it's pretty much it so far, you know? That's great. And so, you know, the neat thing about energy, it's like a Bluetooth. It's like a Wi-Fi, right? So yeah. if you're located in Hawaii or Norway or Germany, you're sending a frequency to the people that you're working with. And I've got to say Norway, I visited Norway about five or six years ago and it was calling me home. I was like, you know, I'm five foot 11, not, not to mention, I, I felt very normal there. I felt very, cause I, in Florida, I was very tall. I was taller than the average person where when I went to Norway, I kind of felt short and I'm like, gosh, I felt just the land itself, the people, the trolls, like everything. Mm -hmm. I was like mm -hmm. all of these elementals, everything was just calling my name. And so I know I'll be planning a trip back to Norway and even Germany for that matter. My friend's in Germany right now and she's sending me these beautiful pictures <laughs> and I'm like, Ooh, I've got to go back to Germany. So Martin, it doesn't matter where you are. You're sending an amazing frequency out to all of the people, you know, that you're working with and they'll feel that, you know, that's palpable. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Well, great. Well, thank you so much for coming on the show. This was wonderful and for sharing all of your knowledge about the shamanic journey. Yeah, thank you for having me. Aloha. You deserve to navigate your life in alignment with health, happiness, and abundance. To learn more about the services that I provide, including Beyond Quantum Healing Hypnosis, EFT Tapping, and the Emotion Code, visit my website at www.theexistentialempath.com.